Hello and welcome back to Channel England Football. My name's Gary and finally I get to do a pre-match preview with you guys. So since I've started this channel, England hasn't played a game. So I've been really excited for this one. Next Wednesday, we're playing Austria. Next Sunday, we're playing Romania in those two warm-up games for the European qualifiers. So here's my thoughts on those games. Let's get into it. <laughs> So just before we get going, I just want to say if you're new here, please like and subscribe. If you're not new here and you still haven't liked and subscribed, please do so. And everybody, please leave me some comments on, on your thoughts regarding my preview of these two matches leading into these European qualifiers. Right, so getting straight into it, we have... Austria next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Now this is going to be taking place where well, both games are at the Riverside Stadium. So this is in Middlesbrough for those of you not from England. So it's Middlesbrough FC's football ground. It holds around 35,000. England have played there before. I think going back around 10 to 15 years ago. Now um, it may have been actually when, when the new Wembley was being built, but I can't. Don't uh, you know? I'm not quite certain on that. But it's a fantastic ground. I think it was built in the mid 90s. It's one of the. It was one of the first modern. Um, football stadiums that you see in England uh, all over the country right now. So it's a great ground, great atmosphere, um, and it's great to see England on the road. You know, England haven't been on the road as often since obviously the new Wembley's been built for obvious reasons. Wembley's the home ground. Uh, but it's great, you know, when England go, the supporters get behind it. It's great for those fans further north uh, to get to see the national team because it's a long trip for anyone, particularly for any England midweek games, to get down to London. So it opens it up to those, you know, particularly young people who've never seen England before. So yeah, it's fantastic that they're there. So looking at this first game then, so it's England versus Austria. So like I said, it's on Wednesday at 8 o'clock, uh, so that's next week. So this is a, quite an interesting game because Austria, out of the two, Austria are the one that have qualified for the European Championships. So they're in Group C with the Netherlands, Ukraine uh, and North Macedonia. Uh, so they're there. So obviously, they, you know, they've done well to get there. They're ranked 23rd in the world. Now, I know... Everybody who's anybody who knows anything about football and the FIFA World Rankings would take that with a pinch of salt. You know, the FIFA World Rankings sometimes, I swear, just make it up. But, you know, it's, it's a rough gauge of where teams are. So, you know, they're no pushovers, Austria. They're really not. You know, they've got Marko Arnautovic that a lot of Premier League fans will know about. Former Stoke and West Ham player. David Alaba uh, of Bayern Munich. They have a lot of Bundesliga-based players. So, obviously, a strong league. Uh, so not coming from the Austrian league, but a lot of Bundesliga-based players. So there's a lot of quality in this team. Uh, some of their recent results, though, you know, they've they've not been the strongest. They lost four 0 to Denmark quite recently, but you know, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't look too negatively on that. Denmark are actually, uh, from what I'm seeing, are a lot of people's dark horse for this tournament. Uh, but they did lose, you know, they took an hammer in really from Denmark. Um, they drew 2-2 with Scotland quite recently, which is quite an interesting result because obviously Scotland are in our group. So it's going to be a really good gauge for England. If, if we start to put them around a similar level given recent results as Scotland, you know, Scotland gave them a good game. So it's going to be a good it's going to be a good gauge for England, particularly for that Scotland game, a sort of football they'll be facing. Uh, and they beat the Faroe Islands 3-1. Now, from what I'm hearing, that wasn't a very convincing win neither, despite the Faroe Islands obviously not being uh, a strong national team. But, you know, so they've won, drawn and lost quite heavily quite recently. So it's it's an interesting game. Made more so, though, because as we all know, this is going to be the game when England are arguably going to be without all of their really starting eleven. Let's be honest. The the three year uh, European final team. So Man United obviously lost midweek. You have got the two uh, two teams tonight. So it's about twelve players, I believe, out of the thirty three. They're not going to be at this game for obvious reasons. You know, Southgate wants to give them the week off. Um, so it's going to be very much a B team for England. You know, we all. Not, you know, obviously there may be some players that are going to be starting in there, but the majority, you know, looking at the squad, I believe, uh, who are going to start that first game of Croatia aren't going to be there. So it's an interesting, you know, it's an interesting dilemma for England. It's by far the toughest of the two games. Ideally, it'd be nice to swap the two games around, um, but it is what it is. You know, in, I think what we will expect is Southgate to play the system uh, that he wants to play in the tournament. Well, I expect a fully, you know, 100% admit we will play that system he'd be daft not to um, but obviously he won't have the personnel he will have chosen his 26 man squad by this time he's choosing it next Tuesday so obviously he's going to use it to do a bit of experimenting will he play will he play the 26 uh, any of those 26 man players I mean or will he will he use some of those 33 so will some of those players that we expect to drop out get a game 
I don't expect them to, uh, and, I, and I don't think they should. You know, we need to start getting these players used to playing with each other that are going to be going. Uh, so I'm glad, actually, by this game that England will know um, their squad. Sorry, I, you know, I did get myself a little bit confused at the beginning there, but England will know their 26-man squad before this game. Um so yeah, let's let's hope he plays those twenty six men. But he may use it as a chance to experiment with some players that maybe haven't just made it who are in that thirty three. Who knows? You know, like I said, I think he should be playing those that I need to get used to playing with each other. Interesting who he starts in goal. You know, obviously Pickford is the number one, but does he give someone else a, a chance to get you know get the gloves? Well, I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be too much of a tough game. I expect England to win. I'll come on to my predictions in a minute. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting who he starts in goal. Who he starts maybe at right back. Um, obviously the big decisions there who he starts up front you know will he go with Kane you know or will he protect him I fully expect though for the Austria game it is going to be different um, but looking you know looking at this game it is the hardest out of the two I expect England though to win 2-0 you know I, I, I expect a 2-0 win clean sheet um, I can't see a huge amount of stuff that's going to trouble England they have come off the back of Austria this is come off the back of some quite difficult results um, so, yeah, I'm going to expect England to, to win. I think 2-0 would be a fantastic result, uh, given the fact that I think a lot of our starting eleven won't be there. So, don't get me wrong, 2-0 would be a great result. And I don't think we should look at this as a pushover by any means. It's going to be a tough game. Um, and it may end up 0-0. You know, it may end up a bit of a stalemate. But um, I think England will have enough anyway, uh, given Austria's recent, for, uh, re uh, recent form. So, I'm going to go with 2-0 for this one. So going on to the second game, as we know, it's Romania, and that's going to be on Sunday, the 6th of June at 5 o'clock. So Austria's 2nd of June at 8pm. This one's on the uh, the following Sunday, 6th of June, 5 o'clock. Again at the Riverside Stadium, so it's great that England are staying there, having a couple of games there. Uh, Romania, though, very different opposition, I think, to Austria at the minute. They didn't qualify for the Euros. Uh, they're ranked 43rd in the world as opposed to 23rd. So obviously a big difference there, but... Obviously, you know my thoughts on the FIFA World Rankings. Uh, their recent games, though, again, it's been a mixed bag. They lost 3-2 to Armenia, which obviously isn't a great result. They lost to Germany, though, but only by 1-0. So read into that what you will. Uh, they did draw quite recently with one of the home nations, Northern Ireland. Uh, so that's an interesting result in itself. Uh, that was in the World Cup qualifier uh, back in November. Um but, you know, obviously this is the, the weaker out of the two. It's, you know, Romania, historically, actually, have got a really good record against England. Um, I think they've beat us more than we've beat them. Uh, and obviously in the past, they've had a fantastic team. They're going through a bit of a down period within the national team at the minute. Obviously, they're not the team. Romania aren't, aren't the international force they have been previously. So, you know, big up them. I hope they do get back to, to their glory days. But I think for England, this is obviously the easier of the two games. I expect Southgate on this game to start with his starting 11 against Croatia. I really do. He's got it. They've got to get some game time together. So I don't know. Read into it all you will. But I, I would suggest that the starting 11 he goes for against this team will be the team he picks against Croatia. Um, I don't think that's, you know, mad to say. I think it's quite obvious that's probably the case. I do think he'll make a lot of substitutions, though. I think everyone will, he'll try and give everyone a lot of game time, or at least half, or 15, 20 minutes, because um, they need it, you know. Uh, but I do think he'll start with those um, with those starting lemmings. He's got to get him. He's got to get him playing together, hasn't he? Before that, before that Croatia game. Um, I do think, though, like I said, the easier of the two. I think England are going to win this quite comfortably. Um, I do. I think that those those lads that are late to the squad, particularly if they've not won the European final, you've got to think a big chunk of those players, given Man United's lost and another team's going to lose tonight, the majority of these lads that are joining up with the England team won't have won a trophy, uh, a European trophy, I mean, so they'll be quite disappointed. Um, so he's got to bear that in mind. So I'm hoping that's going to be, you know, they're going to be turning up for this uh, Romania game, chomping at the bit, you know, really wanting to get it stuck in and, and give it give it a good go with England over the summer, hopefully. So I expect England to run out comfortable 3-0 winners uh, on this game. Uh, let's see. Again, now, it may, the two very awkward games, you know, you've got obviously on the first, uh, first game, like I said, the squad isn't all there. And then the second game, they are there, but they won't have had long together. So it wouldn't surprise me if they, they're quite boring games, quite drab, if England struggle to break both of them down. You know, and again, I just want to say and take this opportunity now for anyone who listens to this. 
And to be honest with you, given what I've seen in my comments and stuff like that, a lot of the England fans that do watch these videos are quite positive. But for those that aren't, you know, let's not get on England's back if they don't thrash Romania 3 or 4 nil. Let's not, you know, get on our back, get on the back if we lose to Australia, Austria in that first game. Because, you know, we, it's, they're both tricky games given when our squad's coming in, who we've got available and things like that and, and it all matters what matters is that Croatia game doesn't it you know it doesn't matter if how many times have we seen Germany's or France and Spain actually not have a very good you know couple of warm-up games or sometimes not even the greatest qualifiers but then they go on and reach the semi-finals and finals in tournaments what matters is at the tournament you know there's going to be a lot of players there's going to be a lot of shifting around obviously the third during all this period from from tonight onwards you know the 33-man squad is going to get chopped down they're going to have his second team available, more or less, for the Austria game. He's going to then get half of the squad coming back in for the Sunday game. So there's loads of lads moving in and out. And some, obviously, a lot will be disappointed because they haven't made the full squad or or they, they've lost a, a European final. So there's a lot of stuff going off in England camp, actually, over this week. So it'd be, it'd be fantastic if England win both of these games, given what's going off in the background and a lot of distractions. So, you know, let's, not, let's get behind the lads. They are warm-up games. Um, the main thing is testing the system and making sure that the players are fit and comfortable with playing with each other. Result is second, uh, but obviously we all want to see England win. Uh, I hope they do. They're my predictions, so I predict Austria game, England will win 2-0. And against Romania, I think it'll be 3-0. So that's two clean sheets. Uh, call me optimistic if you like, but let's wait and see. So thank you very much for joining me for this one. Quite a quick one. So what I'm going to be doing uh, moving forward, like I said, these are my first games I've done. So after the game, I'm going to be uploading my post-match thoughts, including player ratings. I think player ratings is a good thing to do, but please let me know what sort of things you want me to cover in a post-match. Like I said, it's going to be my first one. Um, I'm going to try and do it on the night if I can. Like I said, I am considering going live, but then may or may not happen. You know, I've got a lot going off, so it's just about whether I can squeeze that in. Uh, but I may consider going live but there'll certainly be one uh, a post-match analysis on the night or the, certainly the night after um, and yeah and I'll give you my thoughts on how England's played then obviously next Sunday um, we'll know we'll know who England's starting 11 are um, so I'll be dropping a video definitely next Sunday after that Romania game uh, given it's the weekend and we'll discuss that result and also you know my predictions for England Croatia and that starting 11 so come on England we're, we're so close now we're getting there um, thank you very much for everybody who supports the channel and comments. Uh, good luck to all those England fans travelling up to Middlesbrough and, and God bless Middlesbrough for, you know, I'm sure they'll do a fantastic job hosting England even at reduced capacity. So, yeah, thank you very much for joining me. See you again next time.